This is just so nice. Look at this one great big gigantic casting. Man, I, this, uh, this is the kind of thing that, uh, that makes engineers get all excited. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're an engineering nerd, a Tesla stock investor, or even better, both, this is the video for you. Sandy Munro, who needs no introduction, recently got his hands on Tesla's updated 2021 Model 3. So, in this video, I'll be reacting to some of his thoughts and comments around the vehicle, and spoiler alert, he's not exactly over the moon with everything. So with that said, let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to four free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. That is an obnoxiously good return on your investment. I mean, really, deposit $100 and you'll end up with, at minimum, $21 worth of stocks, a 21% ROI on your money. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. We're uh, looking at the uh, Tesla Model 3, the 21. And uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to have a look a little bit at what's been happening with the body in white. We've already removed the, uh, the fasteners that, were, that secure the, uh, the, the, the wheel inner. So I'm just going to leave these things right here for now. And I'm going to take the wheel inner out. Without the fasteners it's not tough. And no mega casting. What the? Why? Why no mega casting? We'll get to that in just a moment. But for now, enjoy Sandy's reaction to this over-engineered cluster of unnecessary parts and processes. What? Why would I want to keep that? Ah, never mind. Let's get into it. So let's go over here and show you what <coughs> what the model, um, the old Model Three was. So if you look down here, um, you haven't. Um, we didn't show too much of the Model Three. On our own videos but if you look you can see all the different panels all of the different bits and pieces that there are stuck inside of here and then there are smaller pieces on the other side um, it's just uh, not good now it doesn't take a rocket scientist can't help but laugh at this i know it's just an expression but elon musk is literally a self-taught rocket scientist shout out to spacex to ask the question why isn't that just one part and um I don't know who designed this, but uh, I can't say enough bad about them. This may be one of the reasons that they've got problems um, making the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the driver side and the passenger side gaps uh, work. The more bits and pieces you got, the more complexity you've got, the more opportunity you've got for failure, the more opportunity you've got for creep, like uh, this, this, these things do squirm when you weld them. But we did find some good things. So let's look over here. Um, uh, when we look inside this thing, basically I look for good engineering. And here we see that there's, um, there's seven, uh, 17 welds on that plate. But at least it's 17 versus, I'll show you uh, on the old Model 3, which had 26. So this is where we were just looking. And this is where you find the 26 spot welds. And you can see that looks like somebody just decided, hey, let the robot weld until it gets tired. And that's not the right way to do things. Some of you gave me some razzle dazzle about, um, you know, well, Sandy doesn't know, it's just extra safe. And no, it isn't. It's just dollars down the drain. It's wasting, wasting time and money. And actually, the more welds you put in, the more opportunity you've got for, um, for getting a, uh, getting a warping and whatnot. The one other good thing was uh, this, they, they removed one bolt. So, so we're looking here at nine welds and, uh, and one bolt for sure. And I'm only showing you a small area. We, we notice for sure that there's, uh, the, there's, there's a lot less welds in here. And that's, uh, that's good from a profitability standpoint and a quality standpoint. So let's go over and uh, I have to do this. This is just so nice. Look at this one great big gigantic casting. Man, I, 
this uh, this is the kind of thing that uh, that makes engineers get all excited can confirm it's almost as good as um it, this is really really what i'd like to see and i don't know why they didn't do this well sandy i do but we'll get to that in just a moment i mean think about it they had they now they have the uh, the single casting uh for the model y why don't they just fire this baby up change the tooling a little bit okay so whack the end all you really have to do to make this shorter you don't cut it or machine it all you do is just block that off you take that section and you fill it in and that block off could could allow for having that casting in the model three now there's a lot of other reasons maybe they're not doing it i can't think of a single one well sandy i can think of one or two reasons the first, the most obvious to me is the fact that over time, Tesla knows the Model Y is going to be their best selling vehicle. They expect it will sell more than the 3 S and X combined, and it is more profitable than the Model 3 already today. Part of that's due to a sale price, three, four thousand dollars higher. But also Tesla has already told us that their manufacturing costs on the Model Y are lower than the Model 3. So if Tesla had to choose which vehicle do we put this technology into first, obviously it makes sense to put this in the more profitable, higher demand vehicle that you're currently scaling. But this doesn't mean the gigantic gigacast pieces won't make their way into the Model 3 over time. In fact, they absolutely will. You can mark my words. Tesla has introduced a huge amount of the innovative technology from the Model Y into the new version of the Model 3. The most notable, of course, being the heat pump, which extends range, especially in cold weather. We also know that Tesla has different versions of everything from its vehicles to its products. Each time Tesla builds a factory, they learn more about how to do it even more efficiently, and so the next factory built integrates those learnings and becomes its own new version. The exact same thing can be said for their vehicles themselves. So don't worry, Sandy. The gigantic Giga castings will make their way into the Model 3, and eventually, it's pretty likely they'll also find their way into the Model S and X. But as you know, there isn't a button Tesla can press to immediately change that part of the vehicle in the manufacturing process. It's a little bit more complicated than that, of course. So Tesla, when they can get around to it, when there's an opportunity, will integrate this technology into the Model 3. But remember, Model Y is more profitable than the Model 3, and this is going to be a long-term thing as well. So it's in Tesla's best interest to get these kind of high return technologies into the most profitable, highest volume products first, then over time to slowly integrate those into the other products. But normally what happens is somebody doesn't want to spend money on new tooling. They want to say, oh no, we've got to keep this stuff. Oh, this is the boat anchor that's holding everybody else back. Tesla needs to not, not listen to some financial bonehead. This, this, uh, the hidden factory costs associated with going with all kinds of little bits and steel, that, that, that doesn't come into play because it's hard for anybody to try and figure out how much does all that stuff cost. It's not just what you see, it's what it affects later on. This, this is a fixture that'll give you a perfect body build. The, the closer you can get to a single part, the better off you're gonna be. And I really do wanna emphasize this point from Sandy, the enormous gain in efficiency the huge savings in cost, time, in reduction of parts and processes, therefore things that can go wrong, errors that can occur, etc., is enormous. Just imagine, try to picture this. Imagine before this gigantic giga casting, you have literally hundreds of parts and processes involved just in that small area of the vehicle. Think about how many machines need to stamp different parts, then how many machines need to do spot welding or some other form of attachment to affix these things to one another. Think about all the things that can go wrong in this process. Think about all the time moving and conveying these parts around the factory, handling these parts versus one gigantic cast piece, Bob's your uncle, done. Perfect every time. I recently did a deep dive and nerded out on the engineering brilliance of Tesla's machine that builds the machine. I'll put a card in the corner if you haven't already seen that video. I highly recommend you guys check it out. You can learn a lot about how far ahead of the automotive industry Tesla is already and the rate of innovation. Manufacturing is Tesla's long-term advantage. Okay, so I've ranted enough. Let's go and find out what else is going on. So let's start by coming over here and looking at the, uh, the old Model 3. I uh, could not believe my eyes when I saw these uh, sinusoidal laser welds. Why? I, uh, just w I, I couldn't believe it. And I also want to know what's going on with the self-piercing rivets that were in the, in the trunk here. 
So these are the self-piercing rivets. <clears throat> these are the self-piercing rivets that I, uh, I threw up on last time. Uh, let's see what happens. I'm hoping that there's a, there's a sharp decline in the number of rivets that are in here. But for that, we're going to have to lower the car. So, Okay, so let's have a look at what's happening here in the, uh, in the uh, passenger side anyway. Um, and let's compare what kind of welding we've got. So um, let's just pull everything we need to out here. So you can see what's going on. So first off, no sinusoidal welds, no laser welds. Good idea. Um, cutting it down to just spot welds, you get the job done faster and they're more consistent. Laser welding has lots of good applications, but um, that is not one of them. So that's that. Let's have a look over here at the, uh, at the trunk. <clears throat> so as some of you probably already spotted, they did not change that trunk. Um, I was really, really excited and happy when I saw that they had removed the, um, the aluminum box in the Model Y. They, they put in uh, the, uh, the plastic tub, which I think is perfect. Um, but they, uh, they, they didn't choose to do that. Maybe there's a crash worthiness issue. Maybe they didn't want to buy another tool. But as you can see in here, you've got one, two, three, three, three major pieces of aluminum and then a bunch of um, hanger honors. Um, the good news is that uh, we're looking here at the, um, we're looking here at the uh, uh, self-piercing rivets. They still go up and down, which, mm, I don't know, we didn't have to do that at uh, Range Rover, Land Rover. I don't know why they had to do it here, but uh, at least there's only half of them in there. Um, I guess that's about as good as I can say. I, I, I truly was, I was very excited, very excited to buy this car. And I was really, really hoping that, that Tesla was going to really knock it out of the park. But so far, okay, there's some, there's some nice things that they've did, uh, they've done to, uh, to make it more of an engineering, uh, an engineered body, but, uh, all in all, I'm, um, I was hoping for better. Fear not, Sandy. I'm highly confident Tesla will integrate all of the new technology, all of the new manufacturing techniques from Model Y into Model 3 and other products over time. But at this point in time, it's just a matter of managing resources and priorities. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to head over to the Munro Live channel. This is part of a series. Sandy Munro is tearing down Tesla's 2021 Model 3. I have a funny feeling Sandy's going to be far more impressed when he gets under the hood, looks at some of the electronics and of course the heat pump. And before we wrap up, let me know your guess in the comments below for when Tesla will finally integrate the gigantic Giga casting in the Model 3. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget, if you live in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get up to 4 free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get two free stocks between $2.50 and $250 each just for opening an account. And if you deposit $100, you'll get a further two free stocks valued between $8 and $1,600 each. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again